Hey, what's going on, everybody? People who orbit around the Earth, around the sun, around the galactic center, we're all orbiters. Welcome to the stream tonight, everybody. How's it going? Um, sound off in the chat. If you're out there, we'd love to say hello. I'm gonna make some adjustments here. Um, for those of you who are new to the Orbital Alliance YouTube channel, my name is Nick, and this channel is dedicated to all things space, where we talk uh, space flight, astronomy, um, astrophotography. Hopefully my volume is okay here. Um, and we like to have fun doing it. So on Wednesday nights, we do a stream every, every week at 8 PM central time. And so that's, uh, right now it's uh, central standard time and we just hang out. We, uh, talk about current events in space and time. Like I do tonight, I have some plans tonight. Um, hopefully let's see. Yeah, looks like everything's okay. Um, we like to we like to have some fun in the in the meantime. Uh, the goal is that you would learn something about space tonight, and hopefully that is uh, that is the case. So um, yeah, today we're gonna have a good time. Um, for those of you who are regular regulars on the stream, we have a lot of uh, recurring viewers. Welcome back. I see you, Josh. Uh, what's going on, man? Um, I'm here for Funko Hour, and I don't know about you. Or I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean. I know where your priorities are, man. <laughs> put you put your um, money where your mouth is, right? You splurge on some Funkos, and uh, you end up with a collection like this or like yours. Um, I'll probably wait a few more minutes to do our weekly Funko update. Um, let me know how how does how do things sound on your guys' end? Is my voice volume okay? I actually had to tear out my entire computer setup this week for a job and I had to reset it all back up and a lot of all my settings settings got out of whack. So uh, please let me know if my voice volume is, is okay. Um, or if uh, you know there's any other issues I'm not I'm not noticing through my monitors here. Um, hey, what's up, Ryan and Chelsea? Chelsea wants to know 
uh, when she will get to go to space when question mark. Um, well, uh, get rich and you can go very soon. <laughs> or do something crazy and somebody will pick you and pay for your ticket. Uh, I would say it's possible to go this year, depending on who, what launch, though, uh, hook up with uh, Jeff Bezos and, and let him know like that you really want to go to space and you know they'll pay for your ticket. It'd be great. Um, the other option would be uh, SpaceX and Elon Musk. Um, that would take a lot longer to go with SpaceX. You'd have to either work for NASA or uh, be a part of a very special mission and train for a lot of months. Um, but if you want to want to go ASAP, Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos would be your would be your deal. Um, soon to have more launch providers for humans, um, everyday people like you and I, um, us non specialized folks uh you know who just want to experience it would you actually get go into weightlessness chelsea let me know uh would you actually do that you want to see what it's like to just like tumble around and for how long how long would you do it let me know in the chat awesome good audio sounds good seeing seems a bit off though okay um maybe it's maybe it'll catch up after a little bit so not so soon, sad face emoji. Yeah, I mean, it's like not like not like it's next week. Um, you know, you could go this year if if things panned out the right way. It's it's an opportunity. The other the other way is to go use the Russians because you can buy a ticket with the Russians, but it's like literally like thirty million dollars. So you can go on her path. Sweet. Uh, now if I just had the money. <laughs> Uh, Josh, if, it, if there are aliens, do you imagine they're cosmically nearby enough for us to ever encounter them? Gosh, dude, I mean, maybe the uh, second most ultimate question in all of uh, human existence. I, uh, I would have to believe that they're close enough. And by close enough, I mean in our galaxy, which is stupid far away <laughs> you know uh so to speak in our cosmic neighborhood um yes but like anywhere near so let's look let's talk about scale of the universe really quick so we're on a planet we're on earth which has its own star system which we call the solar system series of planets eight planets around a star that's moving around uh, a galaxy we're in a galaxy the milky way and there are like literally billions of star systems like ours billions with a b uh and they're that's just one little cluster that we're in like a little group now our our local neighborhood of galaxies is called the local group it's really clever astronomers are super clever uh nomenclature uh, so the local group is like a handful of galaxies so billions 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 and then after that there's just like some infinity number of galaxies that have been determined or found discovered uh so hundreds of billions of galaxies times a billion times several billions times a hundred billion i don't know you do the math um either way <laughs> i would have to hope that if you know we are so lucky enough to be in the state we are um that there's some other form of intelligent life cosmically nearby either in our galaxy or in the local group our local neighborhood like the giant universe, the rest of it. I mean, I hope they're not that far away because otherwise what would be the point? <laughs> you know, um, I think that would just be like a way, huge waste of time. I don't think we'll ever find them. Um, certainly not before humans, um, you know, before the solar system gets destroyed by our own star because when, when the sun is dying, it'll start to expand um, and eventually it will envelop Mercury. It'll envelop Venus and Earth and Mars jupiter and then just blow up uh essentially into a planetary nebula leaving behind a white dwarf little pearl um kind of like a corpse of a star and it just shed all its gas away and create a new nebula and then over time that will combine with other gas and create a new star just kind of this like phoenix like from the ashes thing so uh yeah i don't think uh i don't think we'd find anybody in any other galaxies by the time we would you know, this, the sun would blow up <laughs> and we're talking like billions of years from now. Um, if I'm correct, gosh, what was it? Our star is like a midlife star right about now. Earth is like 4 billion years old. Star, sun's even older. So, I mean, you're talking like 5, 10, 12 billion years from now. 
Uh, so if we don't get to other galaxies to find those, that is if we go in the right direction too. If we, do we go in the right direction to look for life in some other galaxy uh, and we happen to go in the wrong direction? Uh, then we wasted, you know, 10 billion years of human existence. <laughs> um, anyway, that's a really big rabbit hole. <laughs> um, so um, let's see. Yes, but is there actually intelligent life on Earth even? That is an excellent question. <laughs> um, I would have to go as far as saying no. I feel like we're semi-intelligent. I'm not going to be a pessimist about it, but I am going to uh, I'm going to say be more specific and say that yes that it is um we're semi-intelligent life how's that with light I realize i didn't have it as bright as i usually do let me boost it a little bit more um there we go i wish i could white balance the camera a little bit better um this is the coldest color temperature i can get on this light and i have an adjustment but i still look super orange i'm like almost an oompa loompa um it's probably because of the blue light back here I wonder if I change that to red <laughs> or orange. Let's see what happens. These are hue lights. These are Philips hue lights. Here's orange. Oh, that's really nasty. Yeah, see, I, I turned a lot more. You can see the white, whiter light here. Um, but if I go blue, like, yeah, there goes the white balance on the GoPro. Um, I think I did. Yeah, I'm okay with it. That's all right. Um, for what lights plan we're all waiting on the Funko. Man. <laughs> Dude, the trolling is uh, is real, Josh. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, all right. Let's do the Funko of the week. All right. So, um if you're new to the channel, you know that I've uh or you you would see here that I've got a huge collection of uh Funko Pop vinyl figures, uh Bible heads and figurines, and every week just for fun. It has nothing to do with space, but I like to pick one and feature one. So, let's turn around here. Let's find one. Um, let's take a look. Um, yeah, let's do this. Who here is an office fan? Who's a fan of the office? Let me know in the chat because this week's Funko of the week, Creed Bratton. <laughs> uh, this is Creed Bratton from the office. He's he got the paper towel of mung beans, uh, growing in his hand. Um, very tiny there. Uh, I love Creed. Creed's one of my favorite characters in the office. Funny in every scenario. So I'm going to feature him uh, back here. So anyway, uh, this might be a little bit of a spoiler um, for my my stream tonight, but I'm going to do something different. I know a couple weeks ago I tried to do some video gaming of a space game. I did Moonbase Alpha, but I couldn't get the the window to match up with my streaming scale and i couldn't adjust it in time so it was like this tiny little window this tiny little corner of my stream was the actual gameplay window it was a mess uh but today i think i have it worked out for a different set of games i'm actually going to do something a lot more fun we're going to go into vr tonight uh i have some space related games for for vr or some like little mini experiences rather um i'd like to thank uh ryan who's on the stream for uh being essentially the sponsor for this by uh kind of per permanently lending me this uh this htc vive headset and uh full vr setup but we're gonna we're gonna jump into it tonight and we're gonna do um we have a tour of the international space station which is kind of like this like 360 degree photo tour um it's not like a 3d thing but it's like a images thing so we can we're gonna go around the space station in vr and there's also like a solar system experience like a mini experience in like the the uh, valve lab um like mini game thing so we're gonna do that in a little bit we'll talk and hang out for a while and then we'll jump into the vr maybe like 10 15 minutes we'll jump into vr but that's my plan tonight so let's do it it's gonna be a blast um ryan speaking of ryan uh, now that xbox is buying activision blizzard do you think there will be a halo starcraft mashup Ooh. <laughs> uh, I mean that would be that'd be insane. I would love that, but uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of other people who would love that too. Could they collide those universes? I, I don't know StarCraft as well. I remember playing it, you know, just multiplayer like back back in the day when it was nor like you know really popular. Um, like what Zerg and Terran and I mean they kind of got all the different names and stuff. So I wonder who who out there knows what time period in Earth's history StarCraft took place because that might settle it right there. Uh, if that's even possible. 
Halo was like the 2500s. So what's where, when, when did StarCraft take place? Um, if there's an inter- internet browser on your headset, check out the Mars images on 360 cities. Yeah, I, um, there's probably a way to do that. I just haven't messed with it. Um, who knows? Um, sweet. Well, let's just talk about space news real quick. Um, what's been going on? I'm going to give you your weekly James Webb Space Telescope update because, again, as we've been talking about every week for like the last four or five weeks, uh, it's the biggest news going on in space, period. And, it's, and it should be. It should be taking the front lines. Um, so Webb Space Telescope launched on December 25th on Christmas, and it's been on its way to its million-mile marker away from Earth where it's going to be taking images of the darkest depths of the universe to help us determine uh, how old the universe is and what's out there. Um, so this Webb telescope is this highly intricate, super expensive telescope. It's been unfolding. It was kind of all packaged up. They launched it. It was successful. It's been unfolding all its like parts. If any one of those things goes wrong, it's game over. We can never fix it. Super expensive mistake. But everything's been going really well, which is sweet. So James Webb Space Telescope is now currently deployed. It's doing great. And they've been calibrating all the mirrors, which are these gold-plated or gold-lined like hexagonal shapes and there's like i don't know 16 18 of them or something like that i can't i don't know the number uh but now they're kind of like orienting them and testing them but i just saw today the latest news is that all of those mirrors have been calibrated and they've been aligned which is fantastic everything went really well um so they're kind of just waiting to get it into position and they'll do some more tests um and i think it's going to be like a multi-month uh period where they're going to like early data and then they'll set it up for its first round of imaging probably over the summer spring summer uh in the northern hemisphere that is <laughs> I always forget the southern hemisphere is backwards like like it's it's winter right now it's super cold outside where i am but it's also summer in australia <laughs> right now so it's also super hot down there um but um so anyway inverse for uh southern hemisphere uh so huge huge wins for the teams at nasa and isa the european space agency for helping james webb launch really well and unfold really well and you know be ready to take some good pictures so that's great um i saw that spacex is um having a fantastic year with launches they've been going on a a hot streak very early in the year which is really good they're going to try to increase their cadence of falcon 9 rocket launches which is their main launch provider rocket um, they launch Starlink satellites, which are their own satellites. They launch commercial crew for this, uh, for NASA as a contract. They, they launch cargo to, for the commercial cargo program for NASA, uh, to the space station. Um, they also do other satellites, government satellites, and, um, even like foreign, um, contractors will hire them to do stuff. So they've been doing a lot. There was a Starlink launch yesterday and I've been waiting to see if we can see it. Um, cause I, I have a couple of videos on the channel. If you're new with us, be sure to check out the Starlink flybys on our channel on the orbital Alliance YouTube channel. Cause those are sweet. And, uh, they, you can see the, there's 60 little Starlink satellites, some up to 60. Some of them are 40 to 50. Um, they all fly in a line. They start spreading out over time. So if you catch it in the first couple of days of launch, you can see the train of satellites going across the sky. Um, eventually it spreads out. They go into their orbit and orient and you can't see them anymore. So you know, the first few days, those are the key, but they launched a new round of satellites yesterday. And I'm hoping, I think I saw in the next few on the 21st in my location, uh, we'll be able to see the train. I think, um, there's some websites that can help you figure out when that's going to be, but got to hope for some good weather. Cause it's been really kind of like, you know, on and off clouds here. So who knows? Uh, but it's been great to see SpaceX really ramping up the launch cadence. I think last year they launched the most rockets ever within a 12 month period. Um, anyway, so there we go. Looks like it's back. Um, yeah, it'll be good. So we can continue to prove that the Falcon nine is safe and reliable. They've been, they have a couple rockets. They've launched 10 times, like re- refurbished and reused. And they're continuing to push that envelope to make sure that people know that, hey, you can launch on our rockets and your payload will be safe. And the cost is going to go down significantly because you can keep reusing our rockets. Uh, so we'll see. Um, so that's been a lot of the big news. I'm trying to think what else is going on. I think we're just kind of waiting to hear back from James Webb. Um, all the updates on that. Um, let's see. Hold on. Um 
um, making sure that this wasn't uh... a. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, I got a text. I was making sure it wasn't somebody pinging about the stream. Um, yeah, I'm looking ahead here. Um, some of the um, planets that have been visible have been slowly cycling to other parts of the sky recently. There was a really great show in the fall, um, at least in the, you know, I guess you can see this just about anywhere. Um, but Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus were putting on this amazing show in the just after sunset, and now the planets are spreading out. Earth is moving. The planets are different places, and uh, you know, Venus is now a morning planet. You can't see it in the evening anymore. Um, and we're getting further away from Saturn and Jupiter, so they're getting dimmer. Um, so the big show that happened in the fall is now starting to die away. I'm kind of sad about that. It was a good, it was a good one for sure. Um, but in terms of like viewable events, uh, 2023 is really the one I think you're going to want to be looking out for because there's going to be a um, an annular solar eclipse. So an eclipse that doesn't quite cover the whole sun. Um, that'll be big. I think that's in is that April. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. Um, We'll, we'll have to see, but 2023 will be good. I'm sure there's some stuff coming up. I just don't know uh, off the top of my head what, what what's coming around in terms of astronomical events. Um, Josh Sear, here's a question. Uh, if you go if you could go to the moon for a day or orbit the Earth in low orbit for a week, what would you pick? Ooh, I, I mean, I would say a week. I want to spend as much time in space, low Earth, low Earth orbit for a week, 100%. The moon would be cool, I, but I don't need to have to, like my name on a plaque. I just want to experience space. Um, I think if I do want to go to the moon, I want to go for a longer time. So I, just duration is everything uh, for me. So I would like to hit, uh, live in low Earth orbit for a week. That'd be that'd be my choice. What about you? What would you do? Let me know. Um, yeah. So if you're new to the channel, um, I'm gonna do my advertisement here. <laughs> um, if you learn something, that's the point of the channel. So you learn something about space. I would appreciate your subscription. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on the video here just below and the red button. Um, once you hit that, a little bell will appear and you can click the bell and it'll notify you on your phone, on your browser when a new video goes live or if my live stream goes live. And so you don't miss anything. Uh, we'd really appreciate your subscription. That'd be, that'd be awesome. So thanks for your support, those of you who subscribe. Um, we continue to go up in subscribers, which is amazing. We're at 266 as of as of tonight, and uh, that's that's just so cool. <laughs> uh, every subscriber we we uh, we gain is like a new milestone for me, a new milestone for the channel, and uh, I'm just really pleased that we're continuing to grow. And in any way, <laughs> you know, if we were stagnant or losing sub subs, I, it'd be a that'd be a problem. But I'm just grateful for everyone who's decided to to tune in and feels like, hey, this this content is uh, worthy of my subscription. So thank you to all of you out there who are doing that. Um, low Earth all, all the way, uh, can't beat that view. Dude, no kidding, right? Like the Earth view, like that would diminish as you went to the moon, right? It would get smaller perspectively. So like, yeah, you want to be right up close to the Earth, see the blue, see all the different like textures on the planet. A couple of weeks back too, I showed you a book uh, at the end of our stream where it was like an astronaut's photos from space. I can't remember which one it was. Um, was it Scott Kelly's or Chris Hadfield's? No, it was Tim Peake, the British astronaut. Um, you know, they a lot of astronauts are making books of photos they've taken from the space station, which is like 250 miles above the Earth, which is relatively close, so to speak. Uh, but you can see all kinds of crazy textures with water and mountains, and sand, um, you know, agriculture, whatever, whatever it is. Um, they make these beautiful books, and I think you could be able to see that right up close. It would be just mind blowing. It's amazing. You, you want to get away from Earth, but the most beautiful thing to see is actually Earth. <laughs> you know, funny how that works. Um, so yeah, nothing too big otherwise in space news. Um, in, in nerdy nerd news, uh, the the TV show The Expanse. We talked about The Expanse on on the stream before. Um, it's a sci-fi epic that was on Amazon Prime. And that just ended, actually. The series actually ended. Season six was the final season. It was a six-episode season. Really short, but they wrapped it up. And that ended last week. And, oh, my gosh, it was amazing. Uh, I can't recommend it enough if you just want to see a really good, um, relatively realistic feeling or interpretation of space travel kind of TV show. Um, the acting is phenomenal. The story is great. The f technology and the space representation, representation the physics are, are, are great. And uh, it is a very adult show, so if you're young out there, uh, ask parents' permission. Uh, but it's 
it's definitely not a, a family TV show for sure. There's a lot of language. There's some a lot of like graphic gore at, at times. Um, it's it's an adult show, so you know just uh, watch with care. Um, but I can't recommend enough for the drama, the story. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. So uh, I was pretty stoked to watch the ending of that. And this is a spoiler-free co- podcast, <laughs> uh, so to speak here. So uh, I won't be talking about any plot lines or anything like that. But I, I loved it. So really, really, really entertaining um, space epic. So go watch that on Amazon Prime. All six seasons are available. Um, favorite, favorite space fiction of all time and best space documentary. Favorite space fiction. Um... Gosh, I mean, like, it's, I'm torn. Does Star Wars count for that? Because I would have, I mean, I have to default to Star Wars. But I know that's a fantasy epic, not so much a sci-fi epic. Um, but I, I, let's say Star Wars. Uh, if not, if it's more realistic, <clears throat> excuse me, fiction, then Interstellar for sure. Um, and best space documentary. Well, and this is like almost. Okay, I'll give you two answers, maybe. Um, Apollo 11, which I showed on one of the first few podcasts, it was not, um, so it was not, uh, um, okay, you don't think Star Wars counts? <laughs> okay, well, then Interstellar. Um, <laughs> the delay on this, it's like 15 seconds or so, so there's like this, like, we're having like a 15 second delay conversation. Um, this is like, oh, remind me to talk about Mars in a second. Um, Best Space Documentary of Apollo 11 came out in like 2019 for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landings. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it, it's like a representation of it. They used like archival footage that had never been released to tell a story. There was no doc, there was no documentary like narration other than authentic audio clips from news reporters and and real people from the era, you know, audio recordings. They were, it wasn't like your traditional, traditional documentary. It was like a movie, but with real footage. It was really cool. Uh, like an hour and a half of it. So I'd say that Apollo 11, I don't know how you can find it other than buying it on Blu-ray. Um, I'm not sure if it's streaming anywhere. It's kind of a small production. It was a limited theater run. Uh, Ryan, if you're still on here, I don't know if you are like, we went to go see that in theaters together. It was, it was amazing. Sound design is just epic. Shook, shook my chair. So you have to listen to that one loud. Um, it was great. Um, cool. Well, we'll probably, uh, kick off the VR session here in a minute. Um, so let me kind of get some of that ready. Um, just do some stuff. I'm keeping in mind too, like how I want to keep this stream improving over, over time here. We've gotten, this is episode nine of the stream. We've been streaming since November, 2021. Um, my, ideas in my head or kind of tr- i want to figure out how to get underscore music in here like uh you know non-copyright stuff that's just playing on a loop underneath me for the whole time but without getting annoying i want to create like a playlist so because some of this like dead air that's going on right now i'm not a fan of it i would like to keep the mood going but i want to get like a spacey music playlist so if you guys have solutions for that other than like using my like video production sl- <laughs> um music that i pay for um let me know so let's see. How are you guys doing out there? What what's going on in your world? Um, anything crazy? Hope you're all staying safe from COVID and healing up if you have it or if you've just had it. Um, all right. All right, so I'm going to – let's do the International Space Station tour first. So I'm going to open this up, and eventually I'll switch to camera views. Um, well, hopefully that didn't, like, take over the, the sound. I think we can hear that. Can you guys hear that music? I'm going to turn it down. Um Sorry if that was loud for you guys. Hopefully not. Okay. Great. Well, I'm going to just switch over my view here and let's see if this works.
All right, how's this? Can you guys hear me now? Sorry about that. Um, okay, I had to add my uh, microphone back into the setup here. Okay, so I'm gonna, hopefully you guys can hear me. I think I got everything going here. So we're in the space station. I'm gonna like lose my visibility here for a second. So I'm gonna trust that everything is just working. Um, <clears throat> I'll check back every now and then to check in the chat. So we're gonna go into VR, let's do it. Okay, so here we are. We got the space station. We got a little map on the, the controller. Is it showing that? Yeah. Um, so right now we're in the Columbus module. So let's let's orient this the right way here. So this is like a top-down view of the space station. Um, it's not showing all the solar arrays and everything like that. So just so you get some picture here. And where that little blue arrow, um, you can see things are, are angled and oriented around a little bit. We're like, the environment here was taken with, 360 degree, degree cameras and they've kind of like given us a chance to look at all these images of the space station so it kind of mimics like being inside so you see the laptops which to me look massive you know this and it looks like really far away the perspective isn't necessarily perfect here in the experience but it's like looking down and around in the space station as if we are floating around in it right now um there's like interactive videos and pictures you can play hey there's a uh, Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. Um, she's getting ready to go to the space station this year, actually. This was, I think, 2015 that she was last up here. Um, I think you can kind of hear her. Is it coming back for you guys? Um, maybe. I don't know. There's audio playing, but I don't know where it's coming from um, or going to. Either way, that's not that important. Um, but we're in the Columbus module, which is actually the European Space Agency module. Um, this is their science lab, which I think now has been outfitted with a sleeping pod and a lot of other experiments to, uh, you know, grow lettuce and things like that, like other space crops. Um, so let's like orient here. So we've got. Uh, Hopefully you guys can see see this here. We're in the Columbus and the forward part of the space station, which is Europe, the European Space Agency. And then right in the middle here is the U.S. segment, the United States. And then over here is the, uh, the Japanese experimentation module, the GEM. And then when you go back here is the Russian segment. So we're going to kind of explore all around the space station and take a look at stuff. So hopefully that map shows up for you and you guys can see my, uh, my controllers. I think that's the case. Um, Let's see, can you see my cross here? Yeah, you can. So we're gonna travel back into the US segment and then we're gonna go forward from there. Um, Kayla says it's working, great, cool. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to control this because uh, I would like to know better how to aim for you guys. Um, cool, so we're gonna go towards the uh, the US segment. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I just hover over it and it takes me there, great. So let's look here. Okay, so we are in node two, I believe. I believe this is node two, a US segment. Um, you can see a bunch of cargo behind a net over here, which is super awesome. There's a docking port below. Um, MPLM, I believe, multi-purpose logistics module. I believe that's what that stands for. You can see the little markers on the wall. If you look, um, Oh, it's covered covered up here too. There's another port on the top on the kind of the dorsal sec segment of the space station. Uh, this is also a an adapter where the space shuttle used to dock right here. To the left is the um, the Japanese segment. You can see on the wall it says the GEM, the Japanese Experimentation Module. Over here it says to Coal, the Columbus module. Um, and if you turn around, we can see this way down the uh, US segment all the way into the, um, the the lab and into node one, which is the original US segment. I'm losing my orientation here. Hey, there's Samantha again. She's talking about, uh, looks like this is a repair station, like a workbench. There's some tools. Uh, that's pretty neat. And then uh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. This is where the Americans sleep. Uh, I'm gonna close this uh, window here. So take a look at this. There are four sleep pods in the space station. Uh, here's one, uh, here's two up here, here's a third one, and here's a fourth one on the floor. But again, it doesn't matter if you uh, 
you know, are in the floor or what. There's no floor. There's no ceiling. Everything is just when you're free floating. There's no direction. So nothing's pulling you down. You can sleep on the floor, and it's going to feel exactly the same if you slept on the ceiling. Each one has a little door, a little pod. I wonder if there's a, a video for that. Is there? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, but uh, oh, how did I do this? I keep moving a little bit. I don't know what I keep pressing. Um, let's see. There's another video here. She's talking about how to use the laptops. This is their location. You can determine where you are. Um, look at all those Sharpies. They got all the Velcro on the wall. That's the thing about... Uh, oh, we bumped the mic there. Sorry. All the Everything needs to have Velcro on it. Scissors, pens, pencils. Um, you know, every little thing has to have Velcro. Otherwise, it'll float away. Especially dangerous things like pliers, scissors, um, you know, utility things. They, they can damage your eyes if you float into them. Damage your body. Um, pretty neat. So this experience is pretty awesome. Let's continue down the U.S. segment. Actually, you know what? No, let's go to ja the Japanese segment over here. Um, it says Kibo. Kibo is the... Uh, okay, so it stuck us way far in. Um, great. So we're all the way down in there. The opposite that way is the Columbus module, which we came out of. So let's look at the map. So we're way over here right now. We were in this middle section. Oh, it took us to it. Hold on. <laughs> I must have moused over. But now we're going to move over here. So we moved to the left side. Um, don't know how, which one is starboard and port. I always forget which side is starboard and port. Um, but this is also a science lab created by Japan. Down here you've got, uh, I believe this is Melfi, as they call it. This is like the freezers. Um, they, they put blood samples and other things that require super cold temperatures uh, in these little pods. They open up and they can only be open for like 30 seconds before all the stuff inside gets spoiled. Um, it has to be super chilled. And uh, I believe that's on the floor of Kibo, uh, the Kibo module, which we're in right now. Um, or is Kibo the one above? I can never remember. So, <laughs> sorry if the sound gets crummy here um, with me aiming another way. On the ceiling, there's another uh, module up here. It's docked. They got a, the door, the hatch is closed right now, but it's another storage capsule um, that's mounted to the top of the Japanese segment. So that's up there. Um, and there's like you can actually physically it's in a whole, like big enough for another person and I'm gonna turn around here and you can see there's an airlock on this side right here let me see if you can show it she's gonna show the airlock um, it's not big enough for people but you could put experiments in there to go to the outside of the space station and to expose them to vacuum um, without having to go in on a spacesuit into a spacesuit like an EVA suit and uh, it's pretty convenient, so really nice. There's also two windows in here, one right there, one on the other side. Um, so it's a pretty cool place to be. It's arguably one of the largest modules on the space station is the Japanese segment. A lot of space to live in and move around. Yes, there are cables and computers, but um, it actually ends up being a good place to be if you need room. I think there's some broadcast equipment here. If I'm correct, uh, there's some microphones and cameras mounted up here so people can do live stream broadcasts to Earth uh, with schools or event, public events, um, which is, is a good, good place to be. There are a lot of videos with astronauts operating from this, this place. Um, let's go back to Node 2. So we kind of move back into the middle here. Um, and we're going to move this way down to the U.S. laboratory. Um, and then we'll move into node one, which is Unity here. Uh, I think Destiny. Yeah, Destiny is um, the US laboratory. So now we're in the middle of that. So here we are. We moved down the ladder here, so to speak. We're uh, moving down. Uh, let me check the stream. How are you guys doing? I moved pretty far away. Um, oops. Keep moving around a bit. Sweet. So yeah, we're in we're in the Destiny module. So the second U.S. module to go up. It's the largest U.S. module, and there's experiments. There's windows in the floor for you to look down at the Earth. I think they're under these hatches. There's a medical station here. So if there's a medical emergency, they can perform surgery here in the U.S. lab. Um, 
there's food equipment is that the water station up there yes this right here is the water station where you can hydrate food or fill up water pouches there's a video here um so samantha is our tour guide here um can't remember what expedition she was on but so they're going to show you how the recycled water from the space station actually gets uh, brought into the uh, water um, distributor and you can get these like dehydrated pouches of food and dock them in here and dispense cold or hot water into the packets so you kind of pick the size that you want so she's got a little packet of food there it might give her a number for what size pouch it is she dials that in and dispenses hot or cold so if you want to eat like you know, hot food for dinner, put it in hot water. I wonder what she has there. Um, I have no idea what it is. Let's see if she, uh, she docks it here. <laughs> um, I wish I had audio on that. I don't know why it's not playing into my ears right now. Um, so she's going to dial in the, the size. She's going to put the little nozzle into the uh, adapter. And then she's going to select the water, and it's going to fill up the little bag and rehydrate the dehydrated food. It's pretty sweet. Um, she goes, boom, and watch the water just spits out. <laughs> uh, it's so cool. It looks like it's some kind of like beef stew or sweet potatoes or something like that. I don't know what it is. Seems to be some vegetables. Sweet. Um, but that's on the ceiling. Um, <laughs> what's that? No tubes over there. Yeah, so if you turn around, um, they, looks like these are the controls for the robotic arm on the space station. Um, so you're grappling cargo capsules and payloads out of the space shuttle way back when. An operator would be right here using these control sticks, kind of like flight simulator, but with real robots. Let's see if, oh, I'm actually can control my orientation. This is great. Okay, I like this. I can do my controls here. So let's look down into the next segment. So let's look at our map here. So we're in the destiny module and we're gonna go uh, this way into, into node one. Um, let's see, am I missing anything? I can't remember which side, maybe this is the robotic arm. Either way, there's a lot of control stations in here. <laughs> Let's go to node one. All right, everybody, so we moved. See how see much further down we went? This is the oldest US segment, the very first. Um, and let me be specific on what a node is. A node is a point where multiple points of something attach to one. It's kind of like a hub or a, a crossroads. Um, and the US has three nodes um, and then adjacent modules are attached to those nodes so you can get to other other modules and remember the space station was assembled across you know 20 years um, piece by piece so it didn't come up all, all at once so node one is the oldest and you can see all the mission patch stickers from all the different missions they stuck you know all over this place there's pictures of real people families oh right that right there that's the um, um, Columbia crew uh, so there's some memorials here to the Paris crews of, of past missions. Um, let's see. There's a there's a Sony or a Canon camera right there. That's pretty cool. Um, there's some more mission patches on this side. Mission patches up here. All the different expeditions that have flown to the space station. Uh, they put their mission patch stickers up here. So, oh look, there's somebody. Um, not sure who that is. Maybe that's one. Of, is that Scott Kelly? Maybe that's Scott Kelly floating down there in the uh, U.S. module in the in Destiny. Um, so because this is a node, there's there's points of attachment all over. So there's one below me. Um, it says to Hab, to the habitable module, but um, they actually ended up using this to dock cargo, which they're doing right now with uh, I think Cygnus docks here. Um, used to be the PMM uh, or like a. This is like a logistics module from the European Space Agency used to dock down here. Uh, but they actually moved that permanently into another place on the space station. So that, I think this is for commercial cargo docks down below. You can see the Earth in that window. See that blue? That's pretty neat. Um, over here is the, um, the U.S. airlock. Um, Quest airlock, I believe it's called. Um, and you can see the actual EVA suits. So let's go over here. So this is actually where the 
astronauts perform EVAs or extravehicular activities out of the space station is in the Quest airlock. They store these spacesuits and cargo in here, and then they go out this door, they shut the hatch, and they depressurize, and they go outside the space station. Um, so she might give a more detailed explanation, but can't really hear it. And I don't think I have the audio routed to you guys. So um, airlock 2AL. Um, this is the Russian segment where the orange wall is. Um, it starts connecting over there. But I'm going to turn. Let's see. I can't remember if there's actually a hatch on the top, too. But I don't think so. It's just cargo. A lot of uh, water, I think. Water pouches, things like that. Supplies. Um, so I'm going to reorient myself here. Um, yes. So node 3. Oh, did we lose my camera? Um, I may have lost my camera. I have to fix that in a little bit. Sorry, guys. Um, but node three is uh, is this way. So let's go to node three. This is another attachment with multiple points you can get to. So um, where did they stick us? Um, okay, so that's where we came from, right over here. This is the bathroom. It's like a little porta potty. Oops, I went back to node one. Let's go back to node three. So this is another module. The bathroom is in here. Um, the workout station, This that's this right here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I know I lost my GoPro. Um, let me check in with the chat, you guys, sorry. Um, Okay, so yeah, camera just disconnected. <laughs> Let me troubleshoot that really quick. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Um, we'll come right back to it. So we're in node three. We're looking at the bathroom. And this blue thing with the gold here, this is like the weight machine. It's But it works on pressurized air pistons for resistance. Um, A-RED, I think they call it. Uh, adaptive resistive exercise device, something along those lines. Um, pretty cool. I'm just kind of freehanding this here. Let me see if I can get my uh, camera back online. What gives, GoPro? I knew this was going to give me trouble tonight. Um, but uh, And then back that way, so there's the bathroom on that wall. If I look down, this is the coolest part of the space station, period. Uh, there's Samantha putting up in the picture. Down below is the cupola. You can see it says two coupe. Um, this was provided by the Italian space agency, um, partnered with everyone else to create this window. It's like a 360 degree window view. And I'll go down there in a second. Let me see if I can get my camera working. Um, let me turn it off. Um, can we get down there? Is there like a, a picture? Um, oops. Maybe not. Um, is this a video? I think there's a video here. There. So let's watch Samantha tour you in the cupola while I try to fix my camera. <laughs> So you can see almost the entire bit of the space station through the window. And they all have hatches to close and protect the windows from debris. Uh, but you get an amazing view of the Earth. You can see all the spaceships. There's the Russian Soyuz up there on the upper left. Um, There's a continent down there, a desert continent. I wonder what that is. Um, you can see the solar panels on the bottom. You can see the Quest airlock, those little like trapezoidal looking boxes. That's on the other side of node three, or node, yeah, node three and node one. You can see the airlock. Maybe she'll look around the other way. Um, so there's the Russian segment. And we're kind of upside down relative to the space station. Um, 
let's see. So yeah, she hopefully she'll turn around in a little bit here. My camera might bounce back here in a second. It looks like my preview is back up. Um, another beautiful view of the earth, which is super cool. I'm gonna cycle my view here in a second. Um, okay, so the video ended. So let me uh, go back to my webcam. I hope I don't have to close out of OBS out of this to get it to work again. That'd be annoying. Um, sorry for the difficulties here. Let me reselect GoPro, okay. Oh, man, I wish it would come back. Well, we might just have to rely on VR here. <laughs> Um, oops. Okay, back online here. So let's continue the tour of the space station. This might be the last thing we have to do tonight. Um, so let's go back to node one. Um, and then we'll go into the Russian segment to Zarya. This is the oldest segment of the space station. There's like a little connector port that we're in here. Um, so the U.S. segment is back down that way, and it's like a real tight squeeze to get through here. Much older looking. A lot of the Russian segments have these yellow and green and orange looking colors. Um, some docking ports, some water canisters there. Um, of course, for the most part, um, everything is going to be in Russian. <laughs> uh, there's some English here, but... Uh, Let's go this way to Zvezda, which is the uh, habitation module for the Russian segment. Hey, there's, uh, oh man, what's his name? Dude, that guy has flown like seven missions to space. Oh, I'm forgetting his, his name. It's escaping me right now. I know it. Um, there's a docking port for the Soyuz in the back here. This is like the dinner table for the Russians patch over here. So it's the Russian flag, the mission patch. This is a sleep station. There's a sleep station here. And then I think there's a bathroom on this side. Uh, but lots of cameras. There's there's some windows here where they do photography. Looking back on the Earth, this is down here. Um, but I know they do a lot of like family meals here. They kind of like get everybody from the whole space station. Russian cosmonauts, American astronauts, European astronauts. They come back here and they do dinner together, which is like a, a community, a camaraderie thing. It's a really special thing to happen here in the Russian segment, which is super cool. Um, again, sorry if you guys are tuning in and, and not seeing the uh, real quick. All right, let's try it again. Hey, I think we're back. Nice. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm going to switch over to my main camera view. Um, for those of you who are tuning in wondering what in the world are we looking at, uh, I'm currently playing VR on my HTC Vive headset. And um, let me adjust my uh, camera lens here. Um, that didn't do much. That's probably good enough. But we're uh, we're in the he VR headset and we're doing a tour of the International Space Station um, through the VR experience. So it's kind of like a 360 degree camera thing. We're kind of hopping to the different modules and I'm kind of explaining what I know about the space station. Uh, just to give you guys a glimpse of what it's like up there. Um, let me check into the chat. Josh says, what view of Earth do you want most to see from space? Um, I mean, I th probably the aurora, seeing the aurora borealis at night or the aurora australis in the south, um, just to be able to see the glowing like rainbow waves in the, uh, on the Earth's atmosphere and then be able to fly through them because the space station is low enough that, and the aurora is high enough that they match and kind of go right through them. It's ionized atmosphere which i think is super cool so i'm gonna go back here into the the headset so you're gonna lose me for a sec so again we're all the way in the uh i think the aft part of the space station the the rear end here which is the russian segment um the zvezda module so pretty neat and i'm trying to think let's see here's a video Oh, there's Andre Kuipers. He's a European Space Agency astronaut. I believe he's from the Netherlands, and he's kind of explaining it in his. I've seen this tour on YouTube. Um, they're reusing some footage from his video. 
owned the ATV. That was like a former uh, cargo craft that used to get sent up. Look how huge it is. It's, it's giant. That dude's like floating around in there. Uh, I forgot about the ATVs. They discontinued those cargo crafts. A lot of food and water and supplies got sent up in here. And they used to dock on the Russian segment right over here um, on this side. Hopefully you can see my little pointer here with my controller. But Andre Kuypers was uh, super fun to watch. Yeah, big metal wall in the back. Um, pretty neat. Sweet. Well, let's head back uh, the other way. Let's go to Zarya. Yeah, let me just spin around this way so I can keep um, talking to you guys in the microphone. So we're going to go back to the U.S. segment, to the Node 1. Something that you'll notice here, I'm going to spin around. Um, this is also kind of like the kitchen in the middle of the space station. So again, we're back in the middle. You can kind of see it there. Um, and right here is sort of like a food prep table. There's hot sauce and ketchup and stuff like that that gets prepped right here. A lot of Velcro. It's another surface. Um, this um, suitcase here on the wall is like a food warmer. And I think this has also been replaced since this has been made, which is nice. So here's Samantha again with a, a, a cold food. It's like room temperature. So watch her open it up. Stick it under the uh, bungees in there. Close it up, set a time limit on it, and uh, your food will warm up for you. Pretty interesting way of heating your food. Don't have a microwave up there, but it just uses induction heat. I can't read all that. 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it looks like worth of heating. So if you wanna cook dinner, that's what you do. Grab a pouch, throw it in the suitcase, and it's good to go. Um, pretty cool. Um, so look at the, this is towards the Russian segment over here. Uh, but look at how kind of angles up. Um, the, the PMAs, as they call it, the pressurized mating adapters, have these weird angles to them, and they stuff pouches all around for storage. And it's the same on the opposite end of the space station over here, all the way at the other end where the, the shuttle used to dock. These PMAs, um, I just like the design of it. It makes you feel like you kind of have to crawl and go through this tiny tunnel to get to the next section. It's kind of a neat feeling. Uh, but I wonder what the design choice was all about there. Um, you can kind of see the PMA right in here. The docking adapter into the Russian segment. Um, pretty neat. So that's the space station pretty much. They've expanded it a little bit with um, a couple other modules since then. The Russian segment got a mo new module just last year. The Nauka module just went to the space station, and uh, that's on the, south, the the lower end of it, which is neat. They also deorbited a certain section of it, like a docking port. Um, so it's kind of been like assembled, taken apart, moved, reassembled. Uh, but this is generally what the space station looks like. Again, from here, you can see the, uh, the outhouse, like moon. <laughs> this is the bathroom, the American bathroom. Um, you can see the uh, A-RED, the... Uh, it's an advanced resistive exercise device. I think that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. <laughs> um, right over there. Pretty neat. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to hop out of this and switch over to the other experience. So I'll come back to my main camera here. So thanks for joining me in VR for a hot second. Oh, did I not switch back to it? Oh, no, I'm so sorry. My bad. I didn't realize it. Oh, what a loss. Anyway. <laughs> Probably a few minutes where I'm just talking to the screen there. That's right. There's the suitcase on the wall. Let me replay that for you guys. I think you missed all of that. Um, that was probably like 10 minutes worth of uh, you guys just watching me play VR. Probably pretty boring. Um, but you can see you're making the food pouch. Thermostabilized pouches. That's what she's saying. I can hear it on her, my headset over here. Um, I wonder what... It, I must have missed the button push on my end. Sorry about that, everybody.
anyway so she selects the heat do 10 20 30 minutes 40 minutes pretty cool and then i was looking over here there's the the outhouse on the side and the exercise device and the node three um pretty neat so i'm going to close out of this and uh, we'll get back here okay <laughs> oh vr is awesome it's really cool that's a pretty basic experience in vr there's a lot more immersive experiences that's pretty simple 3d imagery is like not 3d imagery like 360 degree camera snapshots to like float around and not the most immersive but it works it's pretty neat um 9 5 p.m um hey if you're here watching sound off in the chat i'll say hey um what are you guys up to tonight if you're new right now my name is nick welcome to the orbital alliance we talk about space stuff tonight we're doing vr space themed vr and uh let's see here i might need some water <clears throat> um okay so the next thing i'm gonna queue up is the lab i'm gonna see if i can get that to work um so stand by for a moment while i get that ready has anyone done vr who out there has done vr Josh, I know you have. So I'm going to play the lab here. Pew, 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 pew. All right, I'm going to switch over here and just test this. Whoa, oh, it's super loud. Sorry. I'm just going to mute the desktop audio for you guys. Sorry if that blasts out your ears. The Valve logo is like crazy loud. Um... I need to reroute the uh, audio device here on my VR headset real quick. Audio output device, let's do five. Okay. And let me just check, make sure this is showing my, uh, yeah, hey, there we go. Sweet. <laughs> Josh is raising his hand, awesome. You've done VR. All right, we're going to go back in the experience, and I'm going to go to the solar system, which is super fun. Um, oh, I probably got to face this way, don't I? Uh, I'm going to have to get up and walk over there. <laughs> I'm like all tethered to this. Um, let me reorient my camera here. And don't mind the fact that I've got a giant couch in here on its other end. Um, I'm trying to get rid of this chair. Hang on. Uh. All right, so I'm going to get up and try not to, like, bump into stuff. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys can still see me. And my sound might be really hard to get by. So I'm going to be really far away from my mic. All right, so we're in the lab. It's like a mini game experience. Um, so I think if I go over here. All right, let me reorient here. Oh, is it not updating my uh, the screen? Is it not updating for you guys? Because it's actually playing on my end, but. Um, is, uh, is the VR actually showing up? You actually see the screen? Because it looks like the. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's not changing. Ah oh, man, why? It worked in my test. 
Um, well, maybe we can save this one for next time. I don't know why it's not updating. Um, oh, wait, there we go. Hey, nice. How's that? Can you guys see that now? Let me know in the chat. Can you see the planet? The little like, can you see the hands and the planetary thing there? I just liked a different setting in my uh, window capture. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna get into this. So I grabbed this little orb and we're going to go to the solar system. Check this out. This is going to be sweet. Oh, look, everybody, we're in space. Hey. All right, how's the, uh, the camera window look? Um, let me pitch up the, uh, the camera here. All right. Okay, sweet. I think we're game on. So I'm going to be kind of far away here. Hopefully the audio still picks up for you guys. Here, I'll adjust the knob over here. All right, here we go. Let's go explore the solar system together. Wow. I haven't done this in a while, so we're, we're going to have some fun. So here's the sun. And you can, like, move your hands with the controller. And uh, I'm going to... You can choose where you want to like float to. So let's let's go right up to the sun. Hey, look. There's Venus. Uh, oh, is that Earth? There's the Earth. And there goes Venus. It's gonna pass us. Oh, it just passed us on the inside. Um, there's a bunch of asteroids. There's Jupiter. Um, let's find Mercury. Where's Mercury? There it is. There goes Mercury. And let's find Mars. Where, where could Mars be? There it is. Here's Mars. And guess what? You can pick up the planets and look at them. How neat is that? You can see the polar ice cap. Oh, you can like throw them. Woo! <laughs> Wait, why is there gravity? What's that about? Um, can I grab the sun? <laughs> um. Pick it up. Let's take a look. All right, you guys, let's look at Saturn. <laughs> How awesome is this? And I can just let it go and it'll float. Um, let's get under the rings here. Let's take a look at the, uh, oh, the, even, the, even the, maybe on the top too. It's kind of a weird unexplained phenomenon and why there's a hexagonal shape with angles um, pretty cool there's the rings let's just leave Saturn over here let's go to Jupiter all right how are we doing here in the VR section uh, Josh says um, if you could rename any planet which why and to what oh, I gotta think about that I have no idea <laughs> Let's look at the red spot. There's the red spot right here. Maybe we throw Jupiter. Oh, it kind of just levels out again. Um, let's find Uranus. And no, I'm not taking that joke. Um, there it is. Way off in the distance. Here's Uranus. Around us here. Let's find Neptune. Where's Neptune? Let's take Uranus with us. There's Neptune. Way out here. Hello, Neptune. Neptune also has some small ring systems. Did you guys know that? Um, Uranus, Neptune. Roughly the same size, but very, very, very far apart. Neptune is primarily methane. And it also has a great blue spot. Did you know that? There's a giant storm on Neptune. 
I will say Neptune is my favorite planet. I love Neptune. I've always loved Neptune. What a cool looking planet. Super cold. Uh, I just read today that Triton, Neptune's moon, largest moon, is uh, actually um, the coldest place in the solar system. I think it's even colder than Pluto. How crazy is that? Let me get all the planets. Let's uh, bring them back here. Okay, let's go back out here. We'll put them next to each other for scale. Um, let's rearrange. I don't want to lose these guys here. Oop. All right, and then uh, let me get, what's this here? Let's pick up uh, Jupiter to these guys look at that look at that scale Jupiter Saturn Uranus Neptune now let's go get Earth oh, Mercury Venus uh, Venus maybe go right there and we gotta go collect everybody else Mercury we got Mercury I hope these are scale accurate. It looks pretty good to me, to be honest. And we gotta get Earth and Mars. Hey, there's Earth, here's home. There's Antarctica, Africa, there's the United States. All right, let's go back out here. Oops, put that up here. I threw Mars somewhere. <laughs> Did anyone see where Mars went? <laughs> Um, let's see. Let's go look around. Keep an eye out for Mars floating around somewhere in space. Um, is that it? Oh, I think I just saw it. I found Mars. There it is. Now if I can just find the rest of the planets. Okay. Put Mars right here. Here's the order, and then I'll step back. There we have it. There are all the planets. We got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Relatively to scale here, it looks like. Look how massive these gas giants are. The last four made of gas. The first four terrestrial planets made of rock and metal. Um, but the actual like, gas giants, I believe, have metallic cores, or at least most of them do, I think. Um, they're primarily gas and very cold. Jupiter is actually highly radioactive, pretty dangerous to be around. But look at the size. Let's get closer here. Let's put Earth right next to Jupiter. Look at the difference in size here compared to the other planets. Really, really, really tiny. Let's put Mars right next to it so you can see it. And let's get Venus, just a little smaller than Earth, Venus is. And Mercury right here. Very small. Mars is smaller. The moon, Earth's moon, is probably about the size of Mercury. Maybe a little smaller, actually. I can't remember. Um, oops. <laughs> But look at the size compared to Jupiter. First four planets. It's like 100 Earths would equal Jupiter. Um, it's pretty neat. Let me get this to spin. Oops, I bumped. <laughs> look at Mars spinning out of control. You would not want that to happen on your planet. Gravity, tides, everything you've thrown out of whack. Pretty cool, huh? Let's, uh, let's set them back up here. Let's look at them in perspective. Look at that. So I can't go back any further, but take a look at this with the sun in the background there. Pretty cool shot, huh? I like that. And you just look back into the abyss of space. There's the Milky Way right up here. Our galaxy. A lot of asteroids out here. 
This would be known as the Kuiper Belt, which is the next uh, layer beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, of the uh, rocky, icy comets that just sit out here. Um, beyond that is the Oort Cloud, and that's like the fringes of our solar system. Pretty cool. What do you guys think? Do you like this? This is neat, huh? Well, and because we can, let's throw the planets. They kind of like level out. Whew. We're creating some mini eclipses. That's cool. Check this out. Oh no. Oh, Jupiter went in the sun. Is it going to reset at its spot? <laughs> I threw Jupiter in the sun. Oh, no. Bye, Mars. See you, Earth. See you, Venus. Bye, Mercury. Oh, gosh. It didn't reset, did it? <laughs> All right, Saturn. <laughs> oh, it didn't quite make it. Oh, it did. That was super freaky. I thought I just went into the sun. Ooh, look. Look at that. Is that a, a coronal mass ejection, a CME? That's pretty neat. Yeah, good point, Josh, about uh, missing missing Pluto. I, can't, I don't know why they didn't include Pluto. It's pretty lame. Um, change your description to did anyone see where mars went yeah no joke huh cool well i'm gonna hop out of this and uh rejoin the chat here so we can wrap things up give me a second everybody oh there goes some of the planets all right i'm gonna switch back to my camera all right Whew, I'm a little bit sweaty from being the VR headset. Okay, we're back. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. That was cool. I'm sitting on cables, though. Let me move them so they're safe. Um, hopefully that wasn't, wasn't too nauseating for all of you out there. But I definitely wanted to have a little more interest to the, to the live stream this week, which I think it was. I think it was a lot better than just sitting and talking uh not that there's anything wrong with that but um uh, certainly more exciting well i think we should call it a night it's 9 23 i would like to go watch the book of boba fett um because episode four is out um but for those of you who tuned in live thank you so much for joining us tonight if you're tuning in after the fact sorry for some of the technical difficulties there was a few little blips here but we got them resolved and we're back in action on the stream um i'm gonna do my little plug again if this is your first time checking out uh, the live stream with us here, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Orbital Alliance. We'd love to have you uh, stick around with us and not miss any new videos or new streams that come out. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you, subscribers. And, uh, yeah, again, my name is Nick, and it's been fun to hang out with you guys. Um, I'm currently trying to plan what content to be producing next uh, for 2022, and it's going to be great. I've got some cool ideas, you guys. I'm really excited. Um, but let me know what you think. How are you guys enjoying the stream? What, uh, you know, what do you want to see? What are some things you want to talk about? Put them in the comments and, uh, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them next week if I, if I see them. So, all right, you guys, um, uh, I don't have any suggestions for media for you guys to check out this week. I'm a little bit, uh, out of sorts, but, um, keep watching for the, some of the, um, SpaceX launches. Keep an eye out for Starlink if you can in your in your area look and see on the line do a google search for starlink viewings and then you can uh, maybe see the starlink train go over your house it'd be awesome um but with that that is a wrap for tonight's live stream thank you all so much and uh we'll be back again next wednesday night 8 p.m central and uh, we'll have some more space fun and uh maybe i'll find another game to play <laughs> i think it was a lot of fun vr is cool all right cool all right you guys I don't find it. There is stream in. I moved my uh, stream deck over here so I can't really see where everything is anymore. I had to change the position, but we'll see you all next week and Wednesday, and I'll see you all on the other side. Uh -huh.